In the latter half of the period in human history known as the Renaissance, from around the mid-16th century through the end of the 17th, the age of Shakespeare, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Francis Bacon, Isaac Newton, Cervantes, and Galileo and Kepler, the building of the Taj Mahal, the invention of the pocket watch and the water thermometer and the compound microscope, it's as if people said, wait, we're not quite done with the Dark Ages. The collective imagination decided to put into common practice the witch's mask of shame, also known as the brank or scold's bridal. As you look at these images, please bear in mind that what we are really seeing are the true inner faces of the men who conceived and created them to humiliate and torture others physically, mentally, and spiritually. The shame belongs to them alone. These so-called masks were not only to humiliate witches or those imagined to be and keep them from uttering their spells, but also to keep women from idle gossip. As if the Malleus Maleficatum hadn't already been enough to reveal the detailed evil fantasies of the inquisitional mindset. Some of these were made for men, too, for drunk or otherwise lewd behavior, and those most often resembled wolves and boars. But by and large, this was man's sadistic makeover for woman. It was much more of a metal cage for the face than a mask usually crafted with bizarre and frightening features. Some had bars and spikes on the inside to either restrain the wearer's tongue or to cut deeply into it if she or he tried to speak or to puncture everywhere else too, like an Iron Maiden just for the face. Some had a bell attached so as to announce the victim's presence thereby inviting good Christians and their children to hurry out and mock her. Some had chains attached so as to permit securing the person in a public place. Duration of having to wear such a thing could be anything from a few hours to a few months. Some men tied ropes to the back of it and roved about the town with the bridled woman or girl and showed everyone how contemptible and scandalous she is. The masks with long ears were intended to showcase the victim as being an ass, and the ones with a snout the same for someone considered filthy, whether for being accused of an illicit affair or merely saying something perceived to be dirty. In many cases, the victim was simply left to die in the mask of shame. Surely, this must all be a holy dispensation of God's love and divine will, humbly enacted by both church fathers and concerned citizens who only want to do what's right and just. Whether true witches or merely persons accused of the same, we remember their sufferings and their deaths today. The church has failed. We know and we remember. Oh, yeah.